PNI PMR R40 Pro PMR446 radios. Hi guys, welcome back to the channel. Just off to pick up an Amazon package, or well, two Amazon packages actually from the closest Amazon locker I could find, which is actually in this building here, which is the local Premier Inn, which is a bit of an odd place for an Amazon locker, but that's apparently where it is, and that's where we're going for two packages. One of them is of interest in this video. So, was go in, go to the Amazon locker, which I believe is in, in there. There's a sign that says, pick up your Amazon order here. Very impressed. <laughs> so I'll go in, pick it up, and we're done. Okay, so that's them picked up. I've got them kind of under arm. I'm not going to tilt them too much, because there's obviously barcodes on these that may contain information that shouldn't be shared. So I've parked my car the other side of this car park in front of the local Iceland supermarket which because it's Sunday is closed because we're after four o'clock so what I'm gonna do is I'm going to get these home so I don't get disturbed by Uber giving me absolutely stupid requests that I don't want to take because I'm not I'm not gonna get enough to justify the trip so they've been doing that a lot lately so Back at the car, let's get these home and we can get that looked at and we'll go back to the proper camera as well. Okay, so here are the radios in question. These are the PNI PMR R40 Pro and they do look somewhat familiar, we'll come to that in a minute. So in the box, so I've already had a quick look in here, off camera. So in the box, we get uh, a user manual in various languages, as is always the way with these products. Two radios, you can see I've already had a look at one of them. So two of them, this one's still wrapped up in its plastic. They're both identical radios. Whoop. I just managed to knock one of the radios over that I will be wanting in a moment. Not one of these brand new radios. Two batteries, these are 3.7 volts, 1,200 milliamp hour lithium ion batteries. They'll probably only have a part charge in them, they won't be fully charged, which is fine. And then we take this out and we've got ourselves a death adapter. Very good. I expect better from a European company. <laughs> I can just go to one side because I will not be using that. Two headsets. They've just got little PTT buttons on. Ubiquitous belt clips. Two of those. I won't be attaching those to the radios until I actually need to do that. Two mains powered chargers. They actually look as though they've got decent flexes on the one that came with my Baofeng BF888. There may be a little bit of a clue here. Came with a single insulated two core flex on it. Although it had a UK plug on it. These have European plugs on it. These are mainly intended for the Romanian market. In which they would use these European type type sockets, so you get two of them. Not a problem anyway, because I can actually charge the radio using another compatible charger, which I've already probably given a clue away. And finally, I've got two lanyards. The radios always come with lanyards, I don't know why. So let's move the box, because we don't need the box now. We'll put the box to one side, because I'll probably need that again when I come to pack it all back up. So we've got this little radio, metal body in there, very nice. Does look familiar, doesn't it? Indeed it does. So if you just bear with. There you go. They're just repackaged and rebadged Baofeng BF888s. The only difference is that on these PNIs, 
to comply with with PNR, a PMR446, the antenna is either glued onto the SMA underneath there, or that's uh, soldered straight onto the board. I don't know without opening it up. Whereas on the 888, which I know people use these on PMR446 anyway, which isn't strictly legal to do, but people do it, even, even though these are 2 watt radios at best. So you just unscrew the antenna and that's what you've got. So basically the same die cast type chassis in the back. They take the same batteries. I can actually prove that. If I find the battery off the... This is the battery off the... The triple eight. Completely compatible. That's now on this radio. Power on. One. And it has that same annoying voice as well. So there we go. PMR446 radios that are pretty much identical to the Baofeng Triple Eight, but how how close are they to the to the BF Triple Eight? Well, one way to find out is by using the Chirp software, which we're going to do. So I'm going to cut to the computer screen and we're going to load up Chirp. I'm going to just load it up off camera. I'm not going to do that. So Chirp's ready to go, the cable's plugged in. So I'll get that all set up. Okay, so we've got the Chirp software up on the computer. We've got one of the PNI radios. The data cable's already plugged in. I'll just unplug that and show you. It's just a standard Kenwood cable. So identical again to the to the normal bog standard triple eight. So my theory is that this should download from the PNI, so we've got the device that we're using, the radio vendor, and the model of the radio, Baofeng Triple Eight. It looks like a Triple Eight. It feels like a Triple Eight. It sounds like a Triple Eight when you turn it on with with that voice, and it works with chirp, like a BF Triple Eight. There we go. So you can change things in here like your frequencies, CDCSS, which it's already showing eight there. And then 916 is the same eight again with 140.8 CTCSS. I can prove that that's what this is doing. This is on channel one. Let's drop the cable down there a moment. I will be plugging it back in. Testing one, two. So that is currently acting and behaving much like a PMR446. Fixed antenna, so definitely PMR446, he says. So we've now downloaded from that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab my Baofeng Triple Eight, the one programmed exactly in, I, I, in an, well, in a, it is an exact identical fashion, in a sense, to the Motorola GP340EX, although that programmed somewhat differently because it uses something a little bit more complicated than Chirp. So if I had just download from that radio, which is the, the BF888, which is programmed for 70 SEMs, what I can do is I can disconnect the cable from that, then plug it into that, and then what I can then do is upload this to the PNI radio, or the PNI badged radio anyway. So upload to radio, that, that, that's uploading. So what should happen, if I disconnect that, this is on channel one, which is 433400. We're indoors, I'm not gonna check the frequencies clear because it's not gonna get very far because I'm surrounded by walls and steel and all sorts. Mike Zero, Whiskey November Uniform Test. Surprisingly enough, that's working. Mike Zero, Whiskey November Uniform Test. There's a bit of a squelch tail on that one. But it's not difficult for me to put this back to how it was. So I have to plug the cable back into the PNI, go back to that one, 
press this one, upload to radio, press OK. And there's the PNI, cables out. Testing one, two. That's now restored. So, in all intents and purposes, it's exactly the same as a Bowfring 888. It can be programmed in identical fashion. You can just use Chirp to do it. You don't have to use um, uh, any special software that is supplied by PNI. Just use the Chirp. As Chirp has supported the Baofeng Triple Eight for years, in pretty much every single guise it's been in. The antenna is non-removable on these PNIs to comply. We shall say with the 446 reg regulations. So next thing is a range test. So I'll use the same setup that I used the last time. Or I could theoretically use the other one of the PNI radios on the window ledge, but because I don't really have much of a window ledge, then I'm not sure how I'm going to actually be able to achieve that. I could use the belt clip to clip it onto the handle of the window, but I'm not sure how well that would work, and that's not a proper test test scenario. So I like these, they're not bad. This feels heavier though, I think. So I'm not sure how much... I've just got a disc low warning, that's brilliant. So I'll have to get rid of that. So I better stop this video. So that's this part done. I'll now move on to the next part, which is the range test. Well, here we are a good couple of months later. It's now the 27th of July at time of filming this. And I've been out to do the range test. Unfortunately, it hasn't worked. The recording done at this end there was no audio. So I have absolutely no idea what got back and what didn't. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to make myself a cup of tea, reevaluate what went wrong, and hopefully I can go back out before it gets too late. It's just coming to five o'clock now, and get that sorted out, because I want to try and get that, that finished. I want to try and get this whole thing finished before um, uh, I go out up tomorrow to finish off the, the video for the Motorola GP340EX because I want to do that tomorrow as well because that's yet to be finished. And obviously with me in the situation I'm in right now, which is my car is still in the garage, has failed its MOT, I can't work. So I've got to do something with my time and it looks like I'll be doing videos for the YouTube channel for, during the time until I get the car back. But then there are other issues that need addressing. So I'll see if we can get this uh, audio issue fixed and hopefully I can get that range test done because I really don't know what happened. Right, so yesterday I tried to do the range test on these PNIR 40 Pros and that didn't happen because the receiving end, the camera at that end, the audio went a bit screwy. So this is attempt number two. So I just need to check something before I go anywhere. Everything looks okay. I'll just keep an eye on the courtesy car because I don't want it going back scratched. As you probably are aware by now, my, my car failed its MOT. And it's gonna to have to have about nearly a grand's worth of work on it to actually do anything about that. So. Instead of me going down to Tesco like I did yesterday, because I don't need to be down at Tesco and a bit short of funds, we shall say, until I can start working again, which I'm hoping will be at some point tomorrow. I don't know yet. I'm going to try and get a progress update from the garage because they actually haven't called me. And they wouldn't call me today anyway because they're shut. Depends on how long it takes for them to get the parts and where they're getting the parts from. I think some of the parts I could get from maybe somewhere like Euro Car Parts or something, so I could have got the parts myself, if I'd known. So we're going to go down the bottom of the street as normal, but instead I'm going to go back through that, that wooded path down the other side. Because that might be interesting. So PNI R40 Pro, I believe these are called. <laughs> May have got it wrong. 
fact, I could probably find out just by popping the battery off this one. Yeah, P PNI PMR R40 Pro. Yeah, there you go. Because I didn't, because I completely forgot what they were called called yesterday when I did the test yesterday. Got my door keys in my hand as well. It's not helpful, but put them in my pocket so I don't lose them. Yeah, I'm definitely not going to lose them in there because the key for that car's in there as well. So, and I do not want to lose that either. So, if all well, the keys are in one pocket, then remember where they are. So, I'll just do what I normally do first, and then we'll go through the woods. Now, it keeps me out of the sun because it's very sunny today. <laughs> and it's still warm even at this time of day, which is about quarter past three. Power on. Bye. So, let's give it a go from here. Okay, first test of the PNI R40 Pro from where the phone box used to be on Ain Road. One, two, three, four, five, five, four, three, two, one. Okay, first test of the PNI. R40 Pro from where the phone box used to be on Ain Road. One, two, three, four, five, five, four, three, two, one. Right. So that's where I normally do. There's normally a phone box there. Not sure how much longer I can do this for because my car has wiped me out financially. <laughs> Not great, but you know, cars cars are kind of can be a money pit sometimes. But the, one, of the, one of the failures, a track rod end, I'm putting down to the council is their fault because of the state of the roads around here, they're full of potholes. And the last thing I had to have fixed on my car that was pothole damage was a broken spring and that was like a, a couple of weeks before I was due to go to America, which was most annoying. But at the end of the day, there's not a lot I can do about that. So, I've got no car, might as well do my YouTube ch channel, catch up on things on there, and of course, keeps me busy. So I don't, there's no point being sat at home doing nothing and feeling sorry for myself, is there? So I'm gonna go to the bottom of the street, down behind the houses, and then we're gonna go through the woods. Because I don't need to go down towards where Tesco is. So, it's a test of the PNI. R40 Pro at the bottom of the street. Test one two three four five five four three two one. Hang on, it wasn't turned on. <laughs> Try that again. Okay, this is a test of the PNI PMR R40 Pro at the bottom of the street. One two three four five five four three two one. Thought there wasn't a red light. <laughs> okay, this is a test of the PNI PMR R40 Pro at the bottom of the street. One two three four five five four three two one. Yeah, because the red light on these for transmit, green light for receive. Exactly the same as the Powerfin 888 on which they are based. I'm sure you can tell with that. Don't need that on right now. So, we're going to go behind the houses and then we're going to go through those woods. If there's a way through to where that path starts. Which I think there should be because they've now finished building all those new houses down there. So, let's see. <sighs> Yeah, there's a way through, so we'll do it here. Okay, this is a test of the PNI PMR R40 Pro around the back of the houses. One, two, three, four, five, five, four, three, two, one. Okay, this is a test of the PNI PMR R40 Pro around the back of the houses. One, two, three, four, five, five, four, three, two, one. Yeah, there's definitely a way through here, through this. New houses here, rather than me going through all of that. So this is a new street that's just been built in Catrick called Lincoln Close. It connects to Somerset Close, in a, that end and that end. Now, you would expect, because the other street there is named after a county, that this would have been named after a county as well, but they named it Lincoln, not Lincolnshire. You know. That's just what they did. So this is, this is a street that they've just recently built. All these houses are finished around here. They are building some houses further up the road. Which will just add to the usual RFI that you get. And this will take us down to the start of the woods. So I'll just do a test from here, see if we get in. Okay, so this is a test of the PNI PMR R40 Pro 
at the end of Lincoln Close where it meets Somerset Close for vehicular entry. One, two, three, four, five, five, four, three, two, one. Right, so we're now onto Somerset Close. Got the older houses one side of the road and the newer ones on my side. Although we are crossing over in a minute to go through the woods. Right, now in the woods. I like it in here because it's a good way to test a radio. Because they've got trees in the way. And trees are good at blocking radio signals. Power on. Bye. Especially at UHF. <laughs> so let's give this a go, shall we? Okay, so this is a test of the PNI PMRR 40 Pro in the woods. Just as you enter them from Somerset Close. One, two, three, four, five, five, four, three, two, one. Ooh, losing my voice a bit there. Okay, so this is a test of the PNI PMRR 40 Pro in the woods. Just as you enter them from Somerset Close. One, two, three, four, five, five, four, three, two, one. Let's keep turning the radio off just to save a bit of power. Now, both receiving and transmitting station were both in the woods at the same time. It wouldn't be a problem, as UHF is line of sight. It's a beautiful day. I could do with the fresh air. Stop me going stir crazy in that house, especially because I can't work. Which is just no fun. If I knew this was going to happen, then I probably would have come up with a backup plan for work. But no, I've learned my lesson there now. Right. Power on. Five. Let's test it here at this crossroads. So we've got Essex close that way, Somerset close that way. Okay, this is a test of the PNI PMR R40 Pro at the crossroads of the wooded path between Essex Close and Somerset Close. One, two, three, four, five, five, four, three, two, one. Okay, this is a test of the PNI PMR R40 Pro at the crossroads of the wooded path between Essex Close and Somerset Close. One, two, three, four, five, five, four, three, two, one. Not holding out much hope because but then again it could have got through the through the bits where there's no trees but line of sight and all that okay it's a bit further into the woods now now this path comes out not far from the flats anyway so I might as well just follow it all the way back need to keep the camera about there that'll do that'll do nicely and the audio on this camera is much better than it was on the previous one it's a bit better bit more sensitive. It's the same uh, dead cat microphone on it that I've been using with the with the Oppo A72. This is my old Oppo Find X5 Lite which has been demoted to camera use we shall say although it's main camera the A72 is secondary camera which is what's being used back home to film the other end. Hopefully if it works this time. Okay there's sufficient trees here so we've got trees there, and we've got trees there. The selfie camera on this is actually pretty good. Power on. Bye. And that's why I haven't used to film me, so let's do this. Okay, so we're in the middle of the woods, so this is a test of the PNI PMR R40 Pro. The signal has to get through a lot of trees, I'm not sure it will. Testing 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. We're in the middle of the woods, so this is a test of the PNI PMR R40 Pro. The signal has to get through a lot of trees. I'm not sure it will. Testing 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Yes. Trees are always good to test whether the signal can get through. At UHF, most likely can't. VHF, maybe, but probably can't. I've not actually done any VHF tests. I mean, I could, but I'm not set up to do that right now. Got a little stream down the side of here. Just show that. It's looking a bit dry. Yeah, it's looking a bit dry, but that's because we've not had a lot of rain recently. 
I think there's a bit of um, uh, liquid in the ground, but not too much. There we go. Should use a selfie stick for this, really, but this mount won't fit a selfie stick. And I need the microphone, so the Gorilla Pod it is. So obviously this is a worst case scenario. I can see the road, so we've already made it back to the road. <laughs> there you go. So what I can do is I'll just go back a little bit. Just about here. Power on. Bye. Okay, so this is a test of the PNI PMR R40 Pro. Still in the woods, but not far from the road. Testing one, two, three, four, five, five, four, three, two, one. Okay, so this is a test of the PNI PMR R40 Pro. Still in the woods, but not far from the road. Testing one, two, three, four, five, five, four, three, two, one. Right. Let's uh, go to the road. And there is the road. Okay, right, we're back. Um, had a bit of a mishap there. Um, there's some nettles and stuff there and uh, the microphone decided it was gonna fall off the top of the tripod on where it's mounted. It's a cold shoe on top of the camera mount and land very close to the nettles. I managed to get it out without getting stung. I suppose that's a good thing. All right, so we're at the road. I'll just come in a back a touch. Power on. Bye. There are power lines here, but that shouldn't affect uh, PMR446 very much, if at all. Okay, so this is a test of the PNI PMR R40 Pro at the bottom of the Hipswell Road West dip. Test 12345, 54321. Okay, so this is a test of the PNI PMR R40 Pro at the bottom of the Hipswell Road West dip. Test 12345, 54321. Oh, and I've just spotted a pothole. I don't think that, that's on the wrong side for the um, uh, failed track rod end on my car, so it's a bit closer to the near side lines, the offside one that's gone. So let's walk back up. And you'll have seen this before when I, I believe it, when I did the um, uh, copper, copper tape antenna test. I'm going to be using that antenna to do something very similar to this with the Motorola GP340EX because while it's tuned for PMR446, it's about close for 70 SEMs anyway. And obviously when I'm doing that, I'll be giving my call sign because it'll be on the 70 centimeter band. Now if it was the 10 milliwatts uh, LPD433, then I wouldn't need to give my call sign. But because that radio is a watt and is on 70 centimeters, I do. Because uh, 433 megs is shared by lots of things in this country. Primary user of that is the Ministry of Defence. So I've got to do that sort of thing without causing interference to the Ministry of Defence. Which I don't think should be a, an issue. Someone's left a bicycle by the fence there. Have they locked it on? Yeah, they have. <laughs> Good, won't get nicked then. Shouldn't really be locking bicycles to fences, but you know. So, I'm almost back, and I'll see how that's come out, and we will hopefully be good, because I'm not really keen on doing this again, so I've got one more block of flats to pass, and then we're back. Yep. So just passing a bus stop now. And let's go into the street from this end. Bit of, bit of exercise, bit of fresh air, and a radio to test. I've got the other one in this Tesco bag under my arm, just in case I needed both of them. Turns out I don't. And 
that should be me all sorted out and whew, I'm out of puff ready to finally finish this video off I hope so anyway because yesterday when I did it it didn't work so hopefully today it will be much better so I'll put that radio into the Tesco bag so I've got my hands free then I can go in here and I'll grab the keys and then we'll put this together right I've been back home about uh say about an hour now well almost an hour and I've gone back through the footage I took in the woods and the audio is there and it worked absolutely fine. Well, when I say, well, not just the woods, it was uh, down the street, then then uh, across Lincoln Close and then down through the woods at Somerset Close and back up again and then back up the hill. And it didn't work at Lincoln Close uh, at the junction where it meets Somerset Close. Now, I still think that could have been two, one of two things. Either I didn't turn the radio on at that point or it just was too much to get through all the buildings. But there is a possibility I didn't turn the radio on because there was at least one point in which I forgot to turn the radio on. But that's all done, that's all working, and yeah, I think that they worked all right. I'm surprised they worked in the woods, to be honest, but they did. Because trees in there, that should have reduced the signal quite significantly. But it worked. I'm, I'm, I'm pleased with that. So I'm not actually keeping hold of these two PM. PNI PMR radios, I'm actually going to sell them on. I only bought them to do the test initially in the first place, and they seem to, uh, oh, well, to do the whole video actually in the first place on them. And it seems to be, they're all right radios, they basically are just Baofeng BF888, so can be reprogrammed for 70 SEMs if you so wish. And I can't properly measure the power output of them because obviously the fixed antennas and it would involve taking them to pieces and everything, which I'm not going to do if I'm planning on selling them. But apart from that, they are good radios, and now I can get this video put together and uh, get it uploaded. So, hope you've been watching, hope you found it interesting. 7-3 for now, catch you in the next one.